gotta do. What's up? It's your girl, Camera Chanel. Yaddy yay. And you are watching Peeps and Views. Uh, welcome everybody to Peeps and Views. This is Proof is in the Play, and you're here with... Camera Chanel. Yaddy yay. And uh, they was gracious enough to uh, volunteer their services to come down here and answer some of my questions. I'm going to dig right in. Um, and to hear you guys' views, uh, this whole Black Lives Matter movement, you know, the movement as a whole, did it affect you at all? If it did, in what way? Um, it definitely affected me. Um, it's always been like a really big thing for me, you know, me being black and all the things like that. But it really didn't start really having like the the push effect on me to want to get out and be active with it until Trayvon Martin. Um, all that thing, there was like a really big rally and different things like that that we were doing in my school, Garfield High School, and I kind of got involved. I was in Black Student Union, so that kind of made me like want to reach out and touch, you know, and then it also made me angry. And um, I was an activist for a lot of the rallies and things like that. And it's just crazy because, you know, you, you look back on, you know, the past and what we've been through as black people and you really have to notice like nothing's really changed so it's like in order for you to get that change you really have to start making it with yourself so I had to start you know putting a lot of stuff into perspective with my life and what I'm doing as a young black adult and you know kind of just altering it to make it so that I'm not being a contradiction to the things that I represent and the things that I support and who I am as a person so that's kind of what it was for me you know it <laughs> no nah, but you know I got a little brother of course PJ uh, he's a uh, freshman in high school a uh, good kid, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he's been around um, a lot of white people like I have. So we see that, you know what I'm saying? We see one side, then we see another, but it started getting out of control. Like she said, Trayvon Martin, that's when I really realized, like, you know, it's time for somebody to do something about it. And I haven't seen this many murders in one summer. You. All the time, it's always been in the summertime, like right when well, the I sun mean, come out. You but know, yeah. this Bro, it's, it's, uh, it's July and August. Yeah. July and August. Yep. The two months. July and August. And it's right before you can say that I haven't seen this many murders. Mm -hmm. But you have. And it's great. Yeah. 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 But you yeah. have. I mean, I. You say it every single. People say it. I hear it every year. I hear it every year. I've never. But it gets closer and closer to home. That's why you say it. Yeah, definitely. And this summer. Most definitely. definitely it gets closer really and closer close to home. To yeah. Here. It yeah. does. Being here and seeing it for myself. And you know. This is, you know, I'm 19 now, so I've never, I was never really the party kid, so I never really was out and about. I knew everybody, but I was never really in the mix. So me being in the mix now, being up on Capitol Hill, being at, you know, Thirsty Thursdays, being at all the events, performing at, you know, different clubs and events, and actually being in the mix, in the midst of everything, it, it gets like kind of crazy. And one thing that really hit home for me is Reese. I called him my older brother since we were little, little kids, and you know, just. See, seeing him that same night, we, she was actually DJing at a party and he came to the party and you know we talked and everything We were all supposed to meet up on Capitol Hill just seeing him that night and then hearing the next morning that he's dead It was it was crazy to me and that made me just look at everything just so much differently Like somebody mm -hmm. can really be with you like in your presence in your face one minute and really be gone the next anyway but It's affiliation man. It's gotten worse like you know what I'm saying people used to respect they used to have boundaries just in general, like if it, it used to be keep it hood, only hood, you know what I'm saying? Gang bang, only gang bang. But now people, you shooting, you shooting up their house where their moms and their kids are mm -hmm. because you're angry over what money and pussy. Like that's the craziest shit to me ever. And that's the thing. There is no outlet. There is no outlet. And the crazy part about it is a lot of people started making this music shit an outlet, but it's like, really? A lot of these niggas out here are just rapping to rap. They're not rapping to get away from life. They're not rapping to, you know, make a better place for themselves. They're not rapping to, you know, get up out of the shit that they grew up in. They're rapping just to rap, but they're rapping because their niggas are doing it. Rapping ain't getting them no money. So at the end of the day, they gonna do what they feel like is gonna get them some money or at least give them some, some power, some respect, some street cred to where another motherfucker gonna hand it over to them. And that's really what it is. It's it's the power and the respect thing. It's not even about, oh, this nigga did this to me, so I'm going to do this to him. It's about, I'm going to do this to you so that they can look at me like I'm that nigga. And that's the problem. Okay, so what started you in, in, in actually, you know, rapping and taking it so real actually, serious? So actually, honestly, to keep it all the way 100, I actually did start off rapping just to rap. I was always a tomboy. I started off rapping when I was seven years old. I was always a tomboy. My best friends, my two best friends were boys. I always used to hang around all boys, no females, none of that. I did everything these niggas did from playing basketball to Pokemon cards <laughs> to everything. The only thing that they ever did that they told me I couldn't do was rap because I was a female. So one day I came and I, you know, sat down, wrote my little rap. 
And niggas started thinking I was filthy. I never really took it serious. Back in the day, I was a dancer. I used to dance my ass off. Like, for real, for real. Shout out to cutting up with a K. But I used to dance my ass off. And, you know, it took me a minute to actually get in the mindset like, yo, I'm really actually good at this. My cousin, Sierra, used to tell me all the time, you're filthy. Like, then people really started hearing me. I used to make little demos on my computer and shit. You know, just fucking around. I was bored. Didn't have nothing to do. I started making little demos in my on my computer. Learned how to work that shit. And was just like, okay, I'm actually kind of cool at this. I took it seriously when I stopped dancing. I was 15. The first time that I took it seriously, my freshman year of high school, I made my first single. So official in my high school went crazy. Like, crazy. Made my second single, I'm on. I got a video for it. I had 1,000, 14,000 views. Right now, sitting at like almost 20,000 views on it. Macklemore shouted it out. Like, and that's when it really clicked. Like, yo, I can really do this type of shit. And back then, for me, I didn't I didn't even cuss on my music up until I was 18. So, because honestly, I feel like when me cussing, it makes me less creative. Because if that's you, what I was saying. You know, it makes me less yeah. creative. But me being in the studio, it's like I'll still say what I want to say. But if I have to add like a bitch fuck you in there <laughs> just to get my point across, because okay. honestly, you okay. can say bitch fuck you in a million you. different ways, but niggas ain't gonna feel you that's and say, you know what, I ain't really fuck. With, I don't I don't I don't really like you right now. They ain't gonna take that the same way as bitch fuck you. Like they're not gonna take it the same way. So sometimes you gotta. It's an emphasis. It's not. Okay. I don't have to say it, but it's an emphasis, and it makes motherfuckers like really tune in and listen. Like, hey, she's really serious. You mm -hmm. know, something. I'm something that they don't want to fuck with in a dress. How about that? Ooh, okay. Okay, that, that's better. That's better. Some of you don't want to fuck with it. Just say that one more time. <laughs> yeah, uh, I wanted to know first off a little bit about you first off, because I know I know uh -huh. a little bit about you, but I want you. I want to know how you got started in DJing. Actually, all right. Let's see. Man, terrible. Uh, DJ famous. You know, with fantasy league DJs. He's that man, for real. Uh, let's see, back, I think it was, no, it's exactly 10 months ago on the first that I started, that I started working with him or even like trying to meet with him, you know, nitpick. Like I used to hop in the booths with him. He used to be like, get out of my booth. You know what I'm saying? He's like, he's like, he used to be like, like scoot over, like real life. Tell me to scoot over. I'm not going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? I didn't even know him. I didn't know him at all. And I just was like one day, you know, my, my, I went back into my dad's history. And I uh, saw that my dad was Method Man's godbrother. Like, I started looking through pictures and stuff, started putting pieces together, start hitting people up on Facebook, meeting family. And I really have family in the Wu-Tang. That's pretty dope. Hell yeah. So I finally asked my dad about it. And he told me, yeah. He was like, yeah, I was involved in the music with Wu-Tang back in the day. But, of course, Navy kid. I moved. Kind of lost connection with him, is what he told me. So then I looked into it, you know what I'm saying? And I start, you know, put I put on beats, just start listening to music all the time, all the time, you know, listen to Wu-Tang, listen to, you know what I'm saying, go all the way back, even back to Lauryn Hills. And then I start, you know what I'm saying, getting into the locals and stuff. I'm like, it, this is different talent, you know what I'm saying? I played ball all my life, so I really didn't know nothing else. So then I started listening to music. I'm like, damn, this is something I want to get into. I know I can't fucking rap, I can't sing. You know what I'm saying? I can write my ass off, but the rapping, <laughs> people, they, they, they too hype for me. I, I'm, you know. <laughs> I'm mellow. I can't do all that jumping and shit, all that screaming. <laughs> I leave it to them. But um, so I was like, you know, I'm getting on a turntable. My dad used to DJ, so I'm getting on a turntable. And like the first session I went to, I was shit. The second session I went to, I knew what the fuck I was doing. And I was like, but you know, investing all the money and stuff took me a while. You know, 10 months took me a while. So I've only been DJing for, you know, a good five months strong. Since the summer, middle of the summer, you know, that's when I started. Maybe even towards the end of the summer, I did a house party. And the shit was crazy. Jumping. Crazy. Jumping. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't know anything. All I know how to do, I didn't know how to blend. I didn't know how to scratch or nothing. It was all foreign. And I, knew, I just knew the buttons to touch. Touched a couple's buttons, turn it over, change the song. Everybody's going crazy. I bought the, you know, I bought the speaker. I bought the controller. I said I was going to do it. And, but I learned there. I learned their music cut off all the time. They didn't know. They didn't know. It was so live. People kept asking me, I want you to do this party. I want you to do that party. You know, in Seattle, some of them, you know, a little reckless. Of course, that's how it goes. House parties, I got to take responsibility for that. Not shutting it down. I would keep jumping to like three. Man, and it was parties every weekend. Every weekend. Every weekend. We was out. Every weekend. Every, weekend. every weekend. 11 events in less than two months. 
every weekend every single weekend and every event was popping from the first one i did a, i did a rooftop week. party that was live Jumping. it got shot up after i mean they didn't want me to stop till 3 30 in the morning you know, everybody's liquor's wearing off they're seeing who's there with them you know fourth of july fourth of july it was live though it was live till 3 30 in the morning on a rooftop it was live. so you basically learned how to dj just like i learned how to do this camera shit. yeah i threw myself in that house yeah I threw myself in it. They asked me to do it. I was so damn right nervous. Off in that bitch. I didn't know nobody was gonna it's a it was a, a boxing party. Taylor and Tyler's boxing yeah. party at the UW. And it was all everybody was there. Uh, it wasn't just the straight niggas. Crazy. It was Asians, white people, all kind of Pacific. I, everybody and and the white people was hanging from the chandeliers. <laughs> from the chandeliers. From the chandel they was going crazy in there, like crazy. Twerking on top of my equipment. I just got. So I watch a lot of YouTube. I watch a lot of YouTube. Like to go back into history, and um, Fame actually just told me about this program. It's a, it's a, a I mean a website. Something you pay for monthly. I, it may be a program, and you learn the inside and out of DJing. And so I just watch YouTube videos. I study how to do what I'm doing. You know, hands on. So I can, you know, what I'm saying, because I'm also learning how to make beats. Oh, okay. So you know you, what I'm saying? You, so you, you so my mind is more going, just yeah, yeah. DJing. So you know what I'm saying? So I when I see the history and look into the history of DJing, that's when that's how I learn to DJ. Cuz I, you know, visually I can pick it up. I can pick it up. I shadow for 10 months. I can pick it up. Whatever they do, I know what they're doing. So I, you know what I'm saying? I want to know the inside now. I started at shit, I'm old. I started at 24. That's old to me. Sorry. Well, even if you think that's old, that's no. But really, I'm just saying. But I'm just saying to know, to, know about it. to know history of hip hop. You gotta think about it. I'm, a, I, you know, 1991. There's kids who's been studying it since the day they were born, raised up on it. Like fame. His history goes back. I'm jumping into his family, which means you know what I'm saying. Like I have, I have to learn stuff because yeah. I want to. You know what I'm saying? That's like photography. If you want to, if you oh, want to get, man. you know what I'm saying? You study back to who was the best and how they were the best. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, you know, I hopped into but, it. But, I've but, all but, my life. but, see, I guess the reason I asked you that is because I was born in the hip hop. I didn't have no choice, really. Even when I was moving around. I was that's born only, on the court. You know what I'm saying? I was, I, I, was, I played <laughs> football for outlet, but like, everything that got me through anything in life was, was music. Yeah. Like, and hip hop was so different from it. Nobody, man, you see it now, like, Everybody listens to hip. I don't give a fuck. I mean, everybody does, right? Yeah, right. But just Im just imagine being, you know, five, six, seven, eight, thirteen years old, and nobody likes the shit, but the people that look like you. Mm -hmm. Like I remember having to walk three miles from my house to get the Biggie tape. That's crazy. That's real. It wasn't internet like that. So if you really wanted the yeah, music, to like I was, man, in eighth grade, I could tell you when Wu-Tang came out. That shit was like crack, bro. For real? That's crazy. Listen, it That's was crazy. like, I could still, I could vividly right now, I can, I can give you at least four or five songs right off the dome. Because that's, eighth grade, that was it. The, the songs, it, it played my whole life. Mm -hmm. From, from, especially sixth grade on. From Big Daddy Kane on. But I look at baby. people who are, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want to do more than who the people that I look up to. So you it's are. Like, so it's like, you know what I'm saying? That's all I can, that's all I can think about. Yeah. So but like, you where just I'm at right now, five months. I, like, where, where I'm at right now, I just think about like, okay, you know what I'm saying? You're cool. You're yeah. cool. Now, no, nah, you ain't cool. You over cool. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you, you talk about, you see, like this is what I'm saying. You over cool right now. Right, and it's cool that you over cool. You know oh, it's cool, no. but in in the same breath, you gotta understand. I just, I'm in that hole too. And <laughs> now, 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 put put this thing, it just put this shit together. It just and you don't think that I remember you. You seen me? I seen. Okay, you. look, everybody looked <laughs> at me to, like I was they used crazy. Me, they used to kick, kick. They used to kick his camera over on accident. Everything. They, they used to run yeah, over. Yeah, well, bro. I remember. I remember. Just to see if I was gonna stay. I remember really, they were just real. doing it just to see yes. if I was gonna stay. I the was in that hole. One. I, I was I in that I, bitch. I, you know what I'm saying? I never <laughs> heard. Of a, that. I didn't hear of a cameraman until you. Yeah, we're cool, just like you are. I, but I have been. But you know, I've always been that way. Yeah, you I've, are. I've but but see, this is what I'm I mean, saying. You are to know. a certain extent. I've seen you on the court, and I've seen you in the booth too. 
See, so you only play over cool to a certain extent. You try to play poker face sometimes, no, and it's cool. Me. It's cool though. No. And I, I, you're the one had to sit on the bench. The you sit on the, you sit on the bench. You gotta have a poker face. What did the coach say? Where's your demeanor? How's your demeanor, huh? Are you letting everybody show your emotions? Are you huh? fucking kidding me? Huh? See? Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, I was asking that's too. Only, that's crazy because that's the only way that I just understood. Wow, you got me fucked up. <laughs> What is you guys' YouTube connection to each other? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> that's crazy. That's like a crazy question. What do you mean? Well, that's not a crazy no, question. No, it actually yeah, really is. You guys, it seems like y'all been together months. for years. See, that's, what it, see, that's the Ten months. Part. Ten months. <laughs> ten months. Like, we started this ten months ago. When she hit me, she hit a... Uh, my. Actually, I didn't even know who she was. Like, I knew who she was through other people, but I never personally met her. I never did any okay. of that. Um, my older brother, my producer, my my kind of my go-to guy, like it's kind of like her fantasy. My <laughs> guy T. Cal, yeah, who I've been working with since I was fourteen, who who's been there with me from jump. He actually met her, knew her, and um, she hit me up on um just like a wing and was like, "Yo, you know, you're super super dope. I've never listened to your music before until today, and I just heard this song by you, and I think you're dope. I want to work with you. I'm starting this DJ thing, and she just kind of told me what she was doing, and she was like, "Yeah, I'm supposed to be meeting up with T. Cal. Let's link." I linked up with her at the studio, and it's crazy because our vibe is like hella weird. Like I don't Clicks. really vibe with too many people, Clicks. but like this is really my nigga. Like seriously, Clicks. we just clicked A automatically. From A then shot. on, like you know, we exchanged numbers. We and from then on, it was like we're we're moving, we're in motion, we are a team, and it's mm -hmm. kind of like for the whole summer you could not see Cami without Yaddy, and it's crazy because. Before I just started going by Cameron Chanel ten months ago, maybe ten months ago, and because I didn't know nobody else, and <laughs> I um. And so she was kind of there with me through the name change thing. And it's kind of like she changed her name. And she was telling me, I'm, I'm going to do something drastic. Everybody knows her as Gunner, you know? Or, you know? And she was like, I'm going to do something drastic. I'm going to change my name. I'm going to have this DJ name. And we kind of went through the changes and the motions together. And it's kind of like ever since then, we've been, like, inseparable. <laughs> Around when we need to next year because it's my nigga. Can't do nothing without my yaddy. You feel me? She, That's just really what it is. Groovy and Julie. Groovy and Julie. On your bitch's booty. You know <laughs> And here it goes. The most difficult thing about relationship, if or, or dating in general, because everybody in Seattle's faggot. <laughs> That's why he asked. He can say that on camera. I can't say that on camera. I can't say that on camera. I can't say that on camera. There's fags in real life. They're gonna be so mad. Oh well, tell them. <laughs> don't watch. Or actually, they do need to watch. Maybe we might teach you guys a little bit of something. Let's go to fag session 101. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're going to fag session 101. Yeah, so just give me, is, give me, mean? give me a of 101. What is that? Give me the, at least the subtitle. Hey, Seattle is a city of fags and alcoholics. So the hardest part for me about dating because. I'm openly bisexual, but I don't really fuck with niggas because they're hella trash, so I usually fuck with bitches. But bitches are either alcoholics and like to go on Capitol Hill and drink every night, or they're faggots and they fag off and, you know, be on you one night, be with your friend the next night, be with your little brother, the, you know? So you never know. You just gotta... <laughs> well, good, game, the, good thing the P game is strong because... You gotta have backup souls. You, oh you gotta have backup souls. Are you kidding me? Is this real life? <laughs> this is real life. It's going on camera. <laughs> what is fagging off? Is what I because need like, to She's not talking about fagging off like that. She's talking about the typical motherfucking Seattle term, fagging off. They say fag off means that the bitches, the girl that you wanna fuck with is a thought. That's right, what it's that's called. What that's that's fagging off? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fag yeah, I done yeah. felt a new word. Yeah. Fag You're saying that niggas ain't shit. And bitches ain't shit neither. Exactly. That's pretty much so what it is. So basically, you, you're going to be single then. You're just no, going to ride no. the wave. It's either, it's either you're going to be a single or you're going to go fag off with the rest of the fag offs and join the team. I mean, if you can't beat them, you got to join them. You know what I'm saying? So join the fag offs. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't personally. Right. Okay. Go join the fag okay. Who tried to mess with me or who's tried to talk to me or who, you know, at least tried to get my attention. So it's like for me now, I've learned to, and I'm being serious right now, I've learned to keep things on a mutual level, you know, to where... There's no feelings involved, so if she does choose to fag off, or he does choose to be a bitch nigga, you know, then I don't have any emotional attachment to them. So you're, and I you're can, playing, you're playing just to play, then you're no, not playing not to even, win or it's, lose. It's not even playing to play; it's playing 
just to just to kind of you know say that you played i guess i mean i guess it is playing just to play i mean because you never know i mean if it if it works out great if it doesn't but you're oh, not no. even planning on it working out there's, anyway there's always one that's on my way. line so i mean i always have options okay you that, know what i'm that, saying so it's like it's like if, if it works still, out cool great awesome we so can, basically because you have so many fish on your line dating is really not a problem for you no it's not you're just fagging off and no, fucking i'm off. not fagging off or you're just choosing to fag off when you want to I would prefer the term tramping off. Okay, okay. you can, that's, I mean, that's, that's you, can, you, can, off, you can, you can, you can get any kind of variation you want. I mean, we have want, to be honest But you're on a, you, first of all. I can call a tramp like okay, okay. six first, times first, a first, first, right? <laughs> you get to choose both fucking genders. Right, okay? exactly. Right? Right. So you double fucking dipping already. No. Okay. <laughs> You double dip. Me oh, keeping oh. it peasy is like I'm honest, so it's not like I, I don't ever. I don't, I don't sell people dreams. Easy you know peasy. What I'm we I honest. Don't, I don't sell people dreams. There's a lot of people who will sell somebody a dream like, oh yeah, I want to be with you forever. You're the only person that I'm talking to. You know, this is what we're doing. Like I don't sell people that dream. Like you know, if it develops into something more, that's something that you know we'll we'll get to that when we cross the bridge. But I'm just having fun. I'm 19. I'm living life. I'm not married. I'm not in a relationship. You know, I, that doesn't mean I'm laying up with a different person every night, or that doesn't mean that I'm you know being physical with another person it just means that if i want to have be in the you know in the midst or in the atmosphere of somebody else every different day i can do that because i have that option and i have those many i have all those fishes so if i want to dig in a different fish bowl every day and put them back at the end of the night then i'm okay with that so you, and they can't be mad are you I ever are they are call you, it taking your nigga yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm saying so when are, are do you ever think that you're going to be able to pick one? Oh, i have picked, it's like, i have picked one I have, no I have, ain't no fucking way no right no 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 look, it's because, no look, way because, no, look. it's no way no, on no. common earth no, there that is. you have picked one no, there is. being that you already have so many fishies on your life no no because that means your pole's still out there Pippa. no no but look okay now i know what Pippin is peasy i don't look, but look it's just like this it's just like this you can have 30,000 fishes on your line and only one and one is one is always going to be bigger than the rest of them you get what i'm saying so that's yeah, going to be the one that you take the picture with and you put on the wall and you yeah, save to eat and cut on, up and you put all the other ones back in the water it's, but why are you why is your pole there if you already has the prize fish because sometimes the prize fish decides to jump back in the water and get the little the fuck oh prize. so yeah, so so it ain't the prize i, I mean what are you prize. talking about it it's, it's it, you prize. know when you get a prize <laughs> fish you stuff the motherfucker and you put it right up there okay <laughs> you know, it ain't going nowhere i'm gonna send her text after this is done. <laughs> oh now you got to oh, she got to send the prize Oh, she got to send the oh, prize and text, so that, yeah, basically, that's why I mean. while you in here flexing and shit, no, I'm not flexing because you're, you're, I'm you're sneaking your pole out there, trying to, no, you know, trying it's to, not sneaking. That word. it's not sneaking, yeah. it's not sneaking, you're trying to hit him and get him to land to die real quick and then just no. cut the line, no, no, you gonna, you gonna catch one and cut the line? That's what you're doing, no, huh? That's just dangling, it's just, just dangling for me. Why you be oh. in a relationship with my music? Is that the answer that everybody wants to hear? No. Fucking five <laughs> hours ago. Hell yeah. Yeti. Now, what's the most difficult thing in dating? I'm like a what's cheater. That that's the most difficult oh, thing for you. What that's keeping it too peasy. I mean, that's no, one. That's being. That's fuck? that's actually being. He said, "What's your problem in relationships? I'm a fucking cheater." So have you have you addressed that issue? Yeah, or well, you? just yeah, just recently. How do you do? I mean, cause I just don't. You I know, guess cause you have that many fish on your line. Fuck no, fish on my line get me caught up around the throat, nigga. Hell no. So I you don't, don't have fishes? No, no, I'm just I don't saying do it. you because everybody has fishes. Everybody has at least five. Okay, that that finds you attractive. That thinks they want to get the bone. But I mean, I think, but, but that's if, how it goes. If, if your pole is out there, if if you dangling the pole. I you know, trying to get know. that big fish, then you know you're still out there. But I mean, if, I mean, if your pole's here, they ain't, you know. I just got out of Seattle. My pole's in the water for too fucking long. I'm, I took that bitch in. Okay, yeah, that's good. One thousand. I'm not. I'm not work. I'm, you know, I'm taking your word but for you it. But you said relationships. Yeah, relationships. I, I haven't been in relationships with a lot of people. I've been <laughs> like, I know I fucked with a lot of hoes, but I ain't been in relationships with a lot of people. Same here. So that's what I. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> I'm done with you. Same here. Oh, oh I would never look bad. I'm too cute for that. What you just said might. No, because they know. It's that, honest. So what you're saying is she knows. Yeah, she knows. 
Is that the only thing that? You... Hell yeah, I'm a good, I'm I'm great. Like I'm I'm a great person. Just in general, I'm a great person. I, you know, like I've been raised around great people. Just in my life, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Just as far as basketball, you know, like I've been to great colleges and stuff like that, which I was given the opportunity for basketball. So I've been around great people, you know what I'm saying. But I just fuck man. It'd be tough, dog. Tough, tough, tough. You in a relationship right now? Uh, I don't talk about that. Okay. I don't talk about that. It's complicated. No, I just I. Just, Next question. Okay. That ain't for you know what I'm saying? Cause who knows? I you're gonna keep this interview for a long time, right? No, I'm gonna delete most of it after I get done. Well, editing. whatever, whatever I talk about, you're gonna I, have it. I don't want anybody everybody that I'm see in a relationship it. with at that time, man. I'm not gonna be. Oh, so basically, it's a work in progress. Very true. Yeah. Okay then. Anything that's a work in progress. Yeah, it's not, it's not been, a bad I, thing. No, come on. I've been through a lot, so oh. I just watch what the fuck I say about anything. I feel it. That us. Yeah, this is the time if y'all had anything that you wanted to say that you had on your mind that you've been thinking about for a while or whatever. It's I'm been... to blow the fuck up. Yeah. Dead ass. Dead ass. Ain't it crazy how much love we get out of state? Like, and how much love that we don't get here. Like, it's really low-key kind of fucked up. But, I mean, well, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's like a whole different type of... I just feel like Seattle's like a crap, like a bucket of crabs, you know? It's like no one just, ever wants to see anybody It get. depends, though. It depends, though. Because 1,000, 10 months, I've grew a lot here. You yeah, have, But definitely. it's just about who you are around. But you, you know, like, but you, I've been also, around individuals who who have taken me 10 steps backwards. Right. But I've also been around people who have taken me 50 forward. Right. But it even... It so, even so much give and take here. It, it is. It's even, but it it's is. even like you are. Like, I talk a lot of shit, and I'm petty as fuck, but I'm really a good person. <laughs> Low key. You just gotta get to know me because I'm an asshole in real life, but... <laughs> I'm glad you let me get to know you, though. Thanks.